Welcome to another Stay Wild at Home adventure with Wild Things. I'm Eleanor Foster, the Fieldwork Manager. I'm Paul, a Fieldwork Instructor. And I'm Jack, also a Fieldwork Instructor. We're down at Cove Sea Beach today and we're really excited to show you some of the fascinating creatures down at the beach here. a group of limpets. Now limpets are part of the gastropod family and gastropod actually translates to stomach to foot and essentially the main part of the body of this creature is just one big muscular foot which latches itself onto the rocks along the shore here and at low tide when they're exposed they're stuck onto the rock like this. When the tide comes in, coming in just now, they'll scurry off to feed and amazingly they always return to the exact same spot. So this is this limpet's exact home. Um, and when they do go off to feed, they'll go looking for algae and they leave a trail of slime, which they kind of use as a trail of breadcrumbs to find their way back to the same spot. And what's really, really clever is that slime actually fertilizes the algae as well. So limpets, really amazing creatures. Another animal that we find in rock pools along the Scottish coast here are these little things called uh, anemones. Uh, we get a couple of different kinds of anemones along the coast here. This one is called the beadlet anemone. They're the reddish brown ones, uh, quite small. They often uh, grow together in little groups uh, in rock pools. Um, when the tide is out, they form a little blob of jelly. So when you see these little red blobs of jelly on the exposed rocks, rock pool when the tide's out, that's what uh, those are. Uh, when the tide comes back in again, uh, the, the little blob unfurls all these little tentacles which come out. The tentacles come out, there's about just short of 200 of them on a beadle anemone. They're arranged in six concentric circles uh, and they're waving about in the sea, uh, finding bits of food for them to eat, uh, which they then uh, suppress with um, stinging cells which they have on their tentacles. So a bit similar to uh, a jellyfish or a stinging nettle or something like that, similar kinds of cells that uh, exert a little sting that suppresses the, um, the prey of whatever they've caught and then they'll bring that prey with their little tentacles into the centre of their little blob uh, and, and eat it. Now I'm close enough to these anemones now, um, they're still on the water, you can see their little tentacles are still sticking out there. These animals are quite happy to thrive in intertidal zones, so they're quite used to being out of the water for part of the day while the tide goes out. They even survive in other places where it's more or less salty, like in estuaries. So you can see the tentacles are out just there, ready to bring in any food. But if the tide were to go out and we were to bring them out of the water, we find that very quickly the tentacles retreat inside uh, the rest of their body and they form these little blobs of jelly around the outside of it, which are going to keep tentacles in the main part of the animal alive and thriving uh, while the tide's out. So this is very sort of gelatinous uh, jelly-like substance that kind of um, encapsulates all the little tentacles while the tide's out and they're quite happy to thrive like this uh, until the tide comes back in again some hours later. We've found a couple of hermit crabs in the rock pools. They're slightly different sizes Hermit crabs, like other crabs, have ten legs, but the first two have evolved into claws. And we don't see most of the other legs because they're inside these shells. So this one's in a top shell and this one's in a winkle shell. As the hermit crabs grow themselves, they'll have to change shells to find one that fits their new size of body. Hermit crabs are extremophiles. So in the rock pools the environment changes a lot and when it's very hot the water can evaporate and it becomes very salty and very hot. Whereas in the winter or in the cold you can get lots of rain water going in changing the salinity of the water again and uh, making a very cold environment for these hermit crabs. So they're very good at adapting to different conditions. Here in my hand I have a shell from a common whelk. Now common whelks are capable of laying over a thousand eggs at a time and you often see 
the egg cases washed up along the beaches here um, and we call them wash balls and I also have a dog whelk shell and dog whelks also commonly found along the seashore are actually carnivorous and they're capable of producing a chemical which pours through the shells of other mollusks and that's how they can eat their prey. This week's activity is for you to create a coastal collage with some of the uh, bits and pieces we've sent you. So we've sent you a variety of things. Uh, you should still have some paints uh, from previous week's activity. Uh, you've got some paper. Uh, we've also sent you some uh, sand uh, to add a bit of texture to your collage. Um, some small seashells, a variety of them, uh, as well as some uh, PVA glue and a spreader. Um, so what you can do with your piece of paper is you can either choose to uh, create a wash uh, using the watercolour paints that we sent you before. So you might want to uh, put a wash all of one colour on it to make a geometric pattern on it with your shells or you might want to create a kind of wash which would set you up for a nice landscape for example maybe doing a bit of sky and a bit of beach. So one we've prepared a little bit earlier would be like this where again we just put a lot of water across the top of here and put the blue paint in and then put some uh, yellow paint across the bottom of it. Uh, if you want to add a bit more texture to it you could add a bit of PVA glue and as you spread this PVA glue on wherever you want it to go you can do that and then you can use your sand to sprinkle that on the PVA glue and that will give you a sandy texture across your landscape. If you want to add some shells to that as well there's a little bag of a variety of small shells I'm just going to tip them out to one side so I can find them. You could do something on the, on the uh, beach whereby for example you pick maybe the tiniest shells put a bit of glue on some of the tiniest shells across here some of the bigger shells maybe in the foreground so you add a bit of depth to it so the tiny shells here the bigger shells towards the front maybe make sure you put lots of this PVA glue on just to hold things in place the PVA glue is white at the moment, but when it dries, it dries clear, so you won't see any of the glue by the time uh, everything's dried out. So you can choose to put a little collection of things together, put some smaller ones in the foreground if you choose to. Anything, just let your imagination run wild and do something like that. Obviously you can build up that whole picture as you go along. You can also try some other ideas. So for example, uh, we talked a little bit about maybe making a kind of mandala shape or maybe something that's a bit more uh, creative uh, as a pattern. So you could, again, put plenty of glue on here and start putting things on in maybe a geometric pattern that goes in a circle. So I'm gonna put five of these on in a star shape. And as you build up, you fill in the gaps with a different pattern. Something like that. Um, start building a circle around it maybe. Again, just let your imagination do whatever you want until you build up an interesting pattern around the outside. Using up all the little seashells that you found. Um, so that's another idea, that's a more geometric pattern. You could also try making some uh, animal shapes out of what you've been given. So a fish over here, we could try a little tail to one side, put something else in for a, a body. Oops. Try putting some bits in for fins at the top and some fins around the bottom maybe something a little bit bigger on the top for a dorsal fin and a little bit of a front like that again you can start making fishy shapes any kinds of animal type shapes that you want to make again I've put loads of um, 
glue on here but you don't want to uh, you don't need to worry about having too much glue on there because like I said the glue will just dry clear and you won't see that once it, uh, once the item's finished again just let your imagination run miles and see what you can come up with Learned lots of fascinating things about our coastal creatures and enjoy making your coastal collages.